Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Spare Leak Project, how the heck are you? Thank you for your patience. What we are going to be discussing today is Bountiful, and I want to share with you right now the quick outline. First, we have the Royal, uh, Royal Astronomy Society discussing a giant comet being a hazard to civilization, what's also known as a centaur. I'm also going to be sharing with you the orbits of TNOs, trans-Neptunian objects, as well as potential threat calculations by astronomers. Now, the threat potential calculations by the astronomers in England suggest a centaur gets catapulted across Earth's orbit every 40 to 100,000 years. Now, should Earth encounter a centaur, a.k.a. large comet, it would most likely disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere. However, it's likely at least some of the comet's sizable fragments would impact Earth. You don't say. Now, in the latest issue of the journal Astronomy and Geophysics, researchers argue that a centaur event... Let me get this set up over here. Okay, so I just had to move my screen around a little bit. So in the latest issue, Astronomy and Geophysics, researchers argue that a centaur event is to blame for significant disruptions, as well as the decline of several ancient civilizations some 30,000 years ago. Now, also, another study, scientists suggest large giant comets may pose a greater risk to life on Earth than asteroids. Giant comets called centaurs travel through the outer realms of the solar system on unstable orbits. Now, because they're unstable, they can't give a precise calculation only within certain parameters. Also, new research shows that these centaurs occasionally get slung from their normal path around the sun, and they'll redirect towards Earth by the gravitational pull of our solar system's gas giants. So they get thrown to Earth. Now, I'm leaving links in the video description box on all of these slides that I'm going to be sharing with you. Let's take a look at this one right here. I don't know how the uh, <laughs> I don't know how the audio is coming in. Hope it's all coming in good right now. But look at all these objects that they're discovering. It's like more and more and more and more. And also, let me add to this. Let's let me break this down. I'm also going to share with you the NASA Kepler telescope revealing largest batch of Earth-sized habitable zone planets yet orbiting around a single star and new exoplanets, a total now of over 4,000, 4,034 exoplanets discovered. I'm going to share links and go directly to the information as I'm doing this presentation, so stay with me, folks. I'm also going to share with you multiple binary star orbits in the Kuiper Belt that have been observed. I'm going to share with you the massive Planet 9 orbit around our sun, as well as many other planets, a.k.a. TNOs, they call them trans-Neptunian objects. I call them planets because that's what they are. So Planet Nine and other TNOs orbiting our sun. And then I'm going to share with you a few orbits that have these really bizarre, these planets are anom very strange orbits that actually go the opposite direction. If let, let me just put it to you this way. If you've got planets, say they're going horizontal in an orbit, just, just imagine that in your mind as a reference point. Well, these other planets are going vertical. So, and they've been discovered and called TNOs. And they've got very irregular orbits. So I don't know what kind of events that might cause in the future. So, wow. There we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Computer froze up again. So, and then I'm going to share with you the Exoplanet Archive. We're going to look at the archive thousands of planets discovered. We're going to look at the actual data. And for those of you that are very skeptical about NASA, I get it. Trust me, I get it. We're going to look at other calculations and variables of data that correlate with the data that NASA is presenting. So it's not just NASA. NASA does not rule the world, folks. For those of you that think these 37th degree Jesuit Smurf orders control NASA and NASA controls the world, you're wrong. It's really the unicorn fairies from the Flat Earth Society. Just joking, just joking. It's not the Flat Earth, it's the Square Earth. We already came to that conclusion. You gotta like it, folks. You gotta like it because now we don't have to worry about a Flat Earth or a Round Earth. It's a square. It's a square. It's hip 
to be square. Except to be square. I knew it. Huey Lewis was on to something when he was talking about it's hip to be square. It's not, he wasn't saying it was cool to be boring. He was saying it's cool to join the cult of Saturn. Boom! I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, I'm stretching there. I'm stretching there. So once again, you got to like it. All right. So let's get started now. I shared with you this first image here. You can see varying centaurs, a.k.a. large planets, that are actually orbiting around, going round and round and round. Now let's go to the... Uh, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here. Are we getting some buffering opportunities? Yeah, figured so. Well, here's the deal, folks. For those of you that want to watch this recorded after the show live, you're more than welcome to do so. Just go to youtube.com slash Clydeson Time Lord. All right, here we go. This is directly from the academic, Oxford academic, centaurs as a hazard to civilization. Now, this is where it gets fun. This is the fun stuff. This is where I start thinking of Star Wars and Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica and interstellar, outer stellar, super duper stellar, really cool. And NASA's Kepler Space Telescope finds hundreds of new exoplanets. And this boosts the total to 4,034. Woo! See that? Okay, so 10 of these are less than twice the size of Earth and orbit in their star's habitable zones. Now, I'm going to share with you how there's over 200 planets that are considered to be in the Goldilocks zone. It's incredible. So here we go. This is another awesome point that I wanted to share with you. This is called the Make Make. Have you guys heard of the Make Make? Well, I saw a star chart, a Sumerian star chart, that this person put Make Make on one of the planets, and it seemed to be there was either 12 or 13 planets or at least 13 objects that were orbiting the sun. And this was a Sumerian tablet, and I think Zachariah Sitchin linked it to the 13th planet, uh, or not the 13th planet, to the Planet X, and the book that he wrote, the first book that he wrote, I think it was called The 12th Planet, right? And this right here, the Make Make, this was another Planet X-like discovery that I think might actually link pretty close to Gil Broussard's 360-year doom cycle. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you pull down here and you look at the actual... Let's take a look at the orbit period of 309 years. So it has an orbit of 309 years around the sun. And could this actually, and it's about, it's considered a dwarf planet. I think they said it was about 75% of Pluto. And if that's the case, when you look at the charts that Gill has put together with the data that he has compiled on ancient prophecies around the world, and he says there's about a 360 year cycle there, maybe that's connected with Make Make. And what a cheesy name to call this planet the Make Make. When I first saw the Make Make on this star chart, it said Make Make on it. I thought, and then, you know, Pluto, Venus, Earth, Mars, Neptune, Uranus, Jupiter, Saturn, etc. Pluto, if I didn't already say that. Well, then there's this planet that said Make Make on it. And I'm like, is that like a typo or something? No, that this is the planet Make Make. And it was discovered once again by that dude, Mike Brown. That guy has discovered all sorts of planets. Hey, way to go, Mike. Good job, man. And then also, even though some people don't like him because he calls himself the Pluto Killer, you know, he still came up with a whole bunch of other planets that you can check out. So anyway, I'm divagating. And we're looking at this Make Make. Here's an image that you can see. And that look, kind of looks like lens flare, right? Well, it's not. It's Make Make and it's Moon. So it's a dwarf planet and it's Moon. This is from A. Parker Southwest Research Institute, the Lowell Observatory. Let's take a look at a couple more. Okay, so here is some orbits that we can look at. The moment you've all been waiting for, folks. These are some of the orbits of these trans-Neptunian objects. There's another image right there. And then this was an interesting article that I pulled up from NASA, how they're releasing the Kepler survey catalog with hundreds of new planet candidates. And if you look through this, 
it shows the technology. It shows where it's at. And this is a great article, so I definitely recommend reading this. And also, then I pulled up this next area right here. So this is where the telescope that's discovering many of these planets is pointing. You know, this is the direction that it's going here. You can see you've got Cygnus. You've got the Kepler field of view, Lyra. And then if you see this Cygnus area, this is where they're finding the majority of these planets. And many of these are actually considered habitable. And why is Jimmy Buffett playing right now on Pandora in my headphones? I've never liked any of his songs. This is supposed to be great white, man. This is supposed to be like 80s rock, not Jimmy Buffett. What the heck's going on here? That just totally messed up my flow. But you've got the brief, the briefing materials and the Kepler survey catalog of planet candidates in the Cygnus field. So let's go back here. You can see the Cygnus field right here. Well, then it gets into the transit graph, shows the brightness, shows how it actually studies the stars with the Kepler satellite and the, the orbit that it's going. And then let's take a look at the different missions that NASA, I know some people say never a straight answer, I get it. This right here, you can see the different satellites that they've used, the different missions, and then also the ground-based observatories that they've got them linked up to. And then here's some data, this is what I like to see, the actual data. New Kepler planet candidates, you can see there are a ton of them, and it shows you the orbits. So up to a thousand day orbit period, you can see on the bottom. And then if you look at the size of these planets, you can see some of them are as big as Jupiter. Some of them are as large as Neptune. Then you've got a whole bunch in the Earth-sized area. And then you'll also notice the yellow within the blue. And what that is in reference to is that's showing you the new discoveries. So you're, you're looking at the new planets that have been discovered as well as previously known ones. You're looking at the orbit dates, the size relative to the Earth, so this is some really good information. 4,034 planets are now in this database. Now, this is how they discern the planet candidates. You can see right here, out of 200,000 stars, 34,000 signals. Then they've got a different way to test the data. Sometimes they use images. Sometimes they use different scanning techniques. There's several formulas that they use, and they actually talk about that. But let's look at this habitable, habitable, nanu, nanu. habitable zone here. <laughs> Right now, harp on, you can see many have been confirmed to be in the Goldilocks zone. And then you've got the candidates and the new candidates and those that are confirmed, which is interesting. You can also see the stars. And then this is the long period planets that they've been studying. Now, this is just fascinating. Now, let's, let's go to the next slide here. This is where the raw data is. So this is the kind of stuff I like to read up on because this is the kind of stuff many amateur astronomers can also verify because they're going to show you the orbits and the paths and, and where you want to line up your telescope. And some people have $10,000 telescopes. Some people have $2,000 telescopes. I've got an 8-inch telescope that does a good job. Uh, will it be able to pick up what some of these things can pick up in space that are orbiting out there? Well, probably not. But let's see what we've got right here. Confirmed planets in the Kepler mission count. 2,337. They've got 4,496 candidates. They've got 290 confirmed in the Goldilocks zone. So 4,585 candidates and confirmed planets. What you're looking at right here, I find this a little bit more... This one's interesting. I find this one interesting because if you're looking at these orbits... You can see Neptune, Uranus, Saturn you know, doing their thing. But then you've got three different areas of concern there. You see how they're going around the circles, the vertical, in a, or I mean horizontal uh, orbits in a vertical format. At least that's what it looks like at this slide currently. Will that be something that might cause different opportunities in the future as well, which will kind of you know, cause and effect within the solar system. Imagine throwing in a bunch of magnets in a on a ping in a ping pong area there. So not ping pong, yeah. Ping pong. Anyway. Nanny nanny, you guys know where I'm going with this. This music's totally messing with me. I'm listening to Jimmy Man, totally screwing me up right now. Anyway, I apologize about that. 
in a minute something else is going to come on and I'll, I'll be back to normal. So this is another area of concern, folks. You're looking at the 2015 RR245, another planet orbit. And you'll see here it's got a very long orbit. It's going to be a long time before it gets close again. But this is directly from the University of Hawaii. Then I shared this with you yesterday. You can see Planet 9 there, Planet X, Planet 11, Planet 12, Planet 13, Planet 14, Planet 15. There's a whole bunch of planets, folks, right there. Yeah. All right. Well, I hear you. I absolutely hear I'm reading the comments right now as I'm doing this. And, uh, yep, absolutely. So here are the actual labels that I want to share with you guys right now. Planet 9, 2012, VP113, the 2013 RF98. Then you have model number 2004, VN112. I went over many of these with you yesterday. The Sedna, the 2007, TG4, 22, 422. 2010, GV174. It sounds like a bunch of different electronics. If you start doing the research on these different orbits and these different planets, you're going to connect some dots with the time frames on these ancient prophecies that talk about catastrophic doom. This right here is the Kuiper Belt Object 1998 WW31. It's interesting how it's called WW31. It's like World War 3.1. Multiple binary objects orbiting each other. You can see the different dates. You can see the actual data. I think this is a very interesting image, and it kind of gives people a perspective on how large the Kuiper Belt actually is. You can see it actually goes within the orbit of Neptune. So it gets pretty close as far as astronomical units are concerned. And then I think I'll close it off with this guy right here. This dude looks pissed, doesn't he? Well, this is an ancient, found this. This is, well, it's about 700 AD, approximately 700 to 1300 AD. And this is a deity that I just wanted to say, what is this? Have you guys ever seen something like this? This is either, I think, Aztec, my Aztec or Mayan culture and he kind of looks like a demon of some sort but he also looks like a cosmic demon because you'll see the two stars that are up towards the top one on the left one on the right and the horns that actually connect to that so I don't know if you guys have ever seen anything like this before thought I'd close it out with this thank you for being here with me ladies and gentlemen have a beautiful day make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel youtube.com slash clandestine time lord also someone said Hillary Clinton love that Beautiful. That's good. See, that's why you guys got to show up for the live shows because then you can actually read the comments and have an opportunity to go with the flow and hear how awesome these people are that actually listen to Leak Project. So, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord, leakproject.com. Be excellent to each other and watch out for the asteroids, man. Watch out for those things because, you know, when they reflect off of Uranus. You'll see all sorts of crazy swamp gas anomalies, and it just gets bizarre. And I don't know where I was going to go with that, but I had something else connected to it. So beautiful night, everybody. Be the change you want to see.